Hi, this is Chris Strong with Rapid Scan 3D. Today we're going to use the Artec 3D scanner to scan a car manifold and showing how to create a 3D mesh from the data. Now we're just going to go ahead and take the part and turn it over. And we're going to go ahead and scan the other side to capture the bottom area which we didn't collect before. Okay, so now we are in Artec Studio and we're looking at the scan data here. Um, and as you'll notice, there is going to be two scans. Uh, they are not aligned to each other, um, identified as scan 1 and scan 2 here. Um, if we turn off scan uh, 2, we can see scan 1 that we collected. And then if we look this way, we can see uh, scan 2. So let me show you both of those. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and run the uh, fine registration. Um, we can do that by texture and geometry or just by geometry. Uh, this part does have a lot of common, or sorry, a lot of geometry on here. Um, not common geometry, not flat geometry, so we can go ahead and utilize uh, this fine registration. And what fine registration does is it looks at each individual scan and does a best fit between all of the frames in each of the scans. Right, so once that's done, I'll go ahead and let's go ahead and align these two together. So go ahead and go into our alignment process. Uh, you'll see here scan one is highlighted. So this is uh, the scan we're going to go ahead and align scan two to. So here I'm going to go ahead and just position scan two so that I can visually see that uh, they're kind of in the same way. Now we can utilize the auto align which is a one hit button, let the software do some alignment, or we can go ahead and uh, use the pinpoint alignment. And what we need to do is we're just going to go ahead and take some common points, and these are just uh, common points to let the software uh, do the alignment. Uh, typically my suggestion is to do uh, at least three points on different planes and let the software basically align here. So we'll go ahead and hit align markers. There's going to bring the points to where I put in. Uh, not very good in regards to where I picked, but I'll just hit align and let the software uh, snap it into place. It is very good 
the software is very smart when it's looking at this in geometry to align the two scans together. Now if our part was more organic, more flat, um, we have the ability to enable texture alignment which is right here. And there is a warning here that just states that anytime we use a uh, texture algorithm for alignment, it might take a little bit longer. But this part, no problem, we'll just hit apply. And now that these scans are, let's say, aligned, I'm going to go ahead and do one more uh, registration. So we did the fine registration, which looks at the scans individually and does a best fit. Now I'm going to use global registration. Make sure that this has just a geometry, and I'll hit apply. Now it's looking at scan 1 in the 2,241 frames and scan 2 in the 520 frames. And it's using all the data that we collected to do a best fit. You'll notice on the bottom of the screen that's doing global registrations. Now it's at step two and step three. And once it hits 404, it will be done. Once we're done with this, you'll notice that on the right hand side there's a max error. Uh, number 0.4.3 um, it's in a change now to 0.3.2 basically what that is is a standard deviation based off the best fit um, with the standard deviation there's never going to be a 0, 0.0 which is a perfect but 0.2.3 is great actually with the Artec EVA anything under 0.7 is an excellent scan there's always going to be some data that's just not aligned to the rest of the scans uh, so from here, we're going to go ahead and create a mesh um, under the Fusion button, which Artec calls creating a mesh of fusion. Uh, you'll see four different options. Uh, the first one is called Outlier Removal. Outlier Removal is not a fusion functionality, but what it does is it removes outlying data that might be in the surrounding area, like you'll see here, this little point. It removes that data. Now that's very useful on shiny objects because you get some reflectivity. Um, or if you have some scanned objects that are on the bottom. This we didn't have any so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to skip to creating a mesh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually utilize the sharp fusion functionality. That's my suggestion here. Right? With the uh, sharp fusion we do have some options um, to say, change some parameters that we can change here. Um, actually the default parameter on the Artec EVA is 1 on the resolution. And we have to options to fill holes we can make them watertight. We can tell the software, um, you know, let's go ahead and fill the hole, but let's just do it in a certain radius. Or we can do a manual. What manual does is it creates the mesh, but it doesn't fill any holes. What we'll get is a pop up menu that will allow us to fill the holes that are identified within the software. Um, here, I don't want a watertight mesh because there are some holes in here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it by a certain radius. So by the radius here, and I'll just hit apply. We do have some other functionalities here, Smooth Fusion and Fast Fusion. Uh, smooth Fusion has the same hole filling options as Sharp Fusion does. Um, but what it also might do with your object, especially if you're on an engineering type uh, product, is it might smooth out the data a little bit. So what it does is it removes some of the points that are within a certain distance uh, and it eliminates it. When it does that, it does smooth out the data a little bit, bet, little bit. So visually, it looks a little bit smoother, but it's not as accurate to the scan data as you collected. We also have a fast fusion functionality. So fast fusion, what it does is it creates a quick mesh. There is no post processing functionalities into it, and what it's meant to be utilized with is to create a mesh to make sure that you have scan the entire part, making sure that there's no holes. So the Sharp Fusion, you'll see in the bottom, uh, took about 225 seconds, so about four minutes to get the mesh complete. Uh, now that we have our mesh here, you'll see uh, Toyota Manifold Mesh. Uh, if I double click in here, uh, I can go ahead and see how many polygons or how heavy the file is. Uh, so we're looking at 1,635,000 triangles. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So if we want to go ahead and get deep into the scan and actually see what the mesh looks like, uh, we can come in here and actually see this mesh. So we do have about 1.6 million triangles in here. It's a pretty heavy file. 
Um, this is great um, for the purpose of doing uh, some type of inspection, um, but if you don't need that heavy of a file, what we can do is actually create a mesh for a lighter file. So I have already one set up here. Um, I'll go ahead and recreate that. Um, basically a lighter mesh here um, will simplify the mesh into something a little bit more useful for reverse engineering and bring it into a lower um, or to a, a modeling software where it's a little bit easier to use. What you'll notice is on areas where there's more um, flat surfaces uh, compared to your curvature data, the triangles are going to open up. Any areas where there's high geometry, like in the Toyota sign or in these edges, um, these are going to keep nice and tight. So we went from the 1.6 million triangles uh, to roughly, let's see, about 169,000. So a uh, pretty um, significant uh, reduction in the size of the file. Um, there's not much difference in regards to the actual quality of the scan data. You might see some resolution being lost, but not much. So here's the lighter file uh, compared to the heavy file. So you can see in the heavy file there is some more distinct notification of, of what the actual surface is like. Um, but for reverse engineering, uh, you really don't need that that resolu high resolution. Uh, this would definitely be sufficient. Uh, within the software, we do have some op option as well to do some measurements. Uh, we do have a linear measurement tool. So if you just want to do some quick measurements, uh, let's just say from point to point, um, we have some holes here. Kind of, and uh, I can go ahead and just take some common points. Now these are where I pick, so. Um, wherever I pick, it's going to give us those measurements. Uh, we can do a geodesic measurement, which is basically the shortest distance between two points based off the curvature of the data. Um, this will not do a uh, based off of a, a certain plane or a certain cylinder. Um, what it's doing is finding the shortest distance between the two points based off curvature. So depending where you pick, it can uh, lead you into a direction that maybe is not too uh, particular to where you want to be. Um, so you definitely want to use some other modeling software like Geomagic to find those measurements. And we can find some surface distance maps, which is uh, a lot of people really like. So we have the light mesh here um, compared to a sharp fusion. Um, we can actually see what the distance is between the two points or two parts to see if there's any change in the data, um, which is really nice. But if you're really doing some inspection, you want to go ahead and take a look at Polyworks or Geomagic. And we do have the option also to apply texture or color content. The Artex scanners do have the ability to do two things with the texture. One is track texture or color content. And the second is to create a 3D model with full texture on here. So you can see clearly here we have uh, the V6 sign here and some markings um, which can be identified for purpose of uh, finding measurements. It can be used for doing some inspection measurements based off the color, maybe some markings, uh, but it also gives you the ability to have a nice 3D model in full color. So it's a little quick tutorial on the Artec 3D scanners. Uh, my name is Chris Strong with Rapid Scan 3D. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email. Thank you very much.